Welcome to CNSA Monthly Catch-Up, Episode 1. The Long March 3B rocket launched the Fongyun 4B weather satellite into geosynchronous transfer orbit on June 3 at the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in Sichuan Province. It was the 16th orbital launch for China in 2021. The Fongyun 4B satellite, which weighs 5.4 tons, will be utilized for meteorological analysis and forecasting, as well as environmental and disaster monitoring. Among the payloads are a geostationary interferometric infrared sounder, a radiation imager, space environment packages for sensing high, medium, and low energy particles, an imaging telescope for X-ray to extreme ultraviolet activity monitoring, and a lightning mapping imager. The new payloads will improve the high-frequency atmospheric monitoring as well as the ability to observe a variety of smaller-scale and shorter-duration weather occurrences. According to the China Meteorological Administration, Fongyun 4B will spend seven years in geostationary orbit at a height of 35,786 kilometers above the Earth. This is an improvement over the Fongyun 4A's five-year lifespan, which began in late 2016. The Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology and the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, both significant CASC subsidiaries, developed the satellite and launcher, respectively. Chinese and Russian space officials presented the concept for a joint international lunar research station on June 16 during the Global Space Exploration GLEX, conference in St. Petersburg, Russia, adding that ILRS has piqued the interest of many governments and organizations. Wu Yanhua, deputy director of China's National Space Administration, described the project's scientific goals, facilities and transportation, lunar surface infrastructure, development stages, and collaboration framework. The ILRS program will be developed concurrently with the United States Artemis Lunar Exploration Program. There are three stages to the curriculum. Reconnaissance is the first step. Between 2021 and 2025, the Chinese Chang'e 4, 6, 7 missions and Russia's Luna 25, 26, 27 missions will collect data and verify high-precision soft landings. Technology verifications, sample return, large cargo delivery on orbit, surface infrastructure for energy, and the start of cooperative operations are all part of the second building phase. Chang'e 8 and Luna 28 are planned missions, with international participation. Aristarchus Crater and Marius Hills in the northwest of the lunar near side, as well as Amundsen Crater near the South Pole, were possible ILRS locations. The hopping robots will fly into the permanently shadowed craters in search of exploitable ice or water. The final utilization phase beyond 2036 would see the start of crewed landings. Shenzhou 12 and its three crew members launched from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region on a Long March 2F rocket on July 17. Just hours after launch from Jiuquan, the spacecraft docked with China's space station module, marking the first crewed visit to the station. According to the China Man Space Engineering Office, the spacecraft connected with the Tianhe Space Station Core Module 6 hours 32 minutes after launch. The 16.6-meter-long, 4.2-meter diameter Tianhe module, whose name means Harmony of the Heavens, would be home to astronauts Nia Haixing, Lu Boming, and Tang Hongba for three months. The crewed mission is the third of 11 scheduled launches for the Chinese space station's three modules. The docking of the Shenzhou 12 was also China's first autonomous rapid rendezvous and docking with crews. On June 18, China used a Long March 2C rocket to launch a group of classified Yaogan-30 satellites as well as one commercial satellite. The Long March 2C rocket took off from Sichuan Province's Xichang Satellite Launch Center. Within an hour, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC, certified the launch's success. A ninth set of Yaogan-30 remote sensing satellites, as well as the commercial Tianqi-14 satellite for Beijing Guadian Gaoka Technology Company Limited, were on board. Yaogan series satellites are believed by analysis for military use. The Yaogan-30 constellation's inclination suggests it could provide frequent revisits for electronic and signals intelligence, as well as optical and radar imaging, in locations near China. Meanwhile, Tianqi-14 is part of Guadian Gaoka's commercial ambitions for a narrow-band Internet of Things constellation in low-Earth orbit. 
It was created by the Shanghai Institute of Space Systems Engineering, which is a significant institute under CASC and SAST, the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology. On June 27, CNSA released images of the Zhurong rover's landing process, as well as video and audio of the vehicle moving on Mars. The deployment of a supersonic parachute, separation of the back shell, powered descent, a hazard avoidance hover phase, and landing are all shown in the entry descent landing footage. The sound recorded were made by metal metal interaction of the rover and lander rack. It was captured by Zhurong's climate station, which is designed to catch Martian wind sounds as well. The design of the new super heavy lift rocket may have undergone recent significant alterations, according to Long Li Heo, lead designer of China's Long March rocket series, speaking during a presentation on June 24 in Hong Kong. The Long March 9's old design, which featured a 10 meter diameter core stage and four 5 meter diameter side boosters powered by 500 ton thrust, dual nozzle YF 130 engines could be replaced by a newer version for a single, 10.6-meter diameter core powered by a cluster of 16 new, single-nozzle YF-135 engines. Payload capacity would grow from 140 metric tons to 150 metric tons for low-Earth orbit, and from 50 tons to 53 tons for translunar injection. A two-stage version would be launched to LEO, while a three-stage version would be launched to higher orbits. The new engine layout is also expected to make first stage reusability easier. Long also mentioned the Long March 5th DY, formerly known as the 921 rocket, as another heavy lift rocket for crewed launch. Using a previously verified lunar orbit rendezvous and docking profiles in the Chang'e 5 sample returning mission, two launches of the three core launcher may deliver astronauts to the moon before 2030. CNSA also aims to employ Long March 9, the new super heavy lift rocket presently in construction, to build a gigantic space-based solar power station in geostationary orbit, according to Long Liheo. The future Long March 9 rocket will be used to build space-based solar power installations 35,786 kilometers above the Earth in a series of launches. The project's goal is to create a vast collecting area that receives solar energy almost continuously, without being affected by the atmosphere or seasonal fluctuations. Microwaves or lasers would subsequently be used to send the converted energy to Earth. The project would generate enormous amounts of renewable energy and aid in dealing with energy resource scarcity. According to Long, the project will start with a small-scale electricity producing test in 2022 and progress to a megawatt-level power generation plant by 2030. In terms of in-orbit infrastructure, the Chinese Academy of Sciences Chengchun Institute of Optics and Mechanics has been working on the technology for an ultra-large aperture in-orbit constructed space telescope since 2014, and it is scheduled to be launched into orbit in the next 5 to 10 years. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell for latest CNSA news and updates. Stay tuned and see you next time.